Hey everyone, this is Nines from Limbo. Here's a quick guide specifically made for Chromicraft's Carsan. This version is quite different from any other TVC guide, as this one is based on the Wrath of the Lich King client, making the whole raid much simpler, meaning I won't go over mechanics that can easily be ignored in this server. The link for each fight is in the video description. Keep in mind, this was made during release week, Many of the fights explained in this video might already have been patched. I will update the description with any major changes. Bosses in Karasan are considered raid level. If you're a tank or a damage dealer, you should consider reaching hit cap. This table here shows you how much hit rating you will need. Karasan without the optional bosses can be cleared in around 60 minutes. The run will extend depending how many of these you do. You will need two healers and one or two tanks. For an unexperienced group, two tanks might make the run easier, but it's totally doable with only one. In fact, running with just one tank is gonna make the run faster. Once inside Karasan, the first door on the right leads to the servants' quarters, where the animal bosses spawn. Most groups will skip this, as it adds around 10 minutes to the run, and all the drops are random stat epic items. Nevertheless, some feral tanks will want this for resistance gear. To spawn the bosses, clear trash until one of them spawns. They're supposed to make an emote when they appear, but that didn't work for us. Also. There's some trash called face hounds, which will disappear when they get hit by magic, so only do melee damage on these. Also consider that the spider boss spawns while stealth, so you might have to run around the rooms to engage her in combat. Another optional boss that is rarely skipped is quite popular since it drops the schematic for engineering scope and a rare land mount. There's only two main mechanics to worry about in this fight. One is the charge, which is not currently scripted, and the other one is a curse called Intangible Presence, which reduces hit chance with spells and melee attacks by 50%. The boss itself is pretty simple. At 95%, Atomen and Midnight will separate, and the tank should be ready to grab them both. You can just focus on the horse. When it reaches 25%, it will be phase 3, which is gonna be an aggro reset, so have the tank be ready to grab the boss again. There's two ways to get to this boss. One is going upstairs from the stables, or the other one is going back to the entrance and upstairs. The spectral retainers mind control, so you might want to kill them first. There's many patrols in this room, which can make your pulls bigger, but whatever you do, pull all the way to the back using line of sight with the columns, that way your damage dealers can AOE them down faster. Once in Moreau's room, kill the skeletons as fast as possible so your tank doesn't get debuffed. Strategy Ads can be mostly ignored. You can AOE them down or focus fire some of them. The Shadow Priest being the highest priority target because it casts Mana Burn and then the 200 users. Everything else can be ignored and will die to cleave or disappear when Moros dies. There's two ways to do this fight, with an off tank or not. If you choose to have an off tank, then have it building threat on Moros so that when the main tank gets gouged, Moros goes to the off tank. The other way to do this is just AOE everything down and then when the tank gets gouged it will go to another DPS. If some of the adds are still up, they'll break the gouge from the tank and the DPS won't be tanking for too long. In the hallway that leads to Maiden, leave the concubines to last as they AOE sleep Maiden should be tank in the center. She will do a silence every now and then, so paladins might have a harder time keeping threat. The most important mechanic of this fight is that you dispel holy fire as soon as possible as it does a lot of damage. 
For this reason, move your team past the columns in order to be in range of the dispellers and do not cause line of sight issues. When Maiden casts Repentance, move the boss into the healers in order to break the stone with the Consecration. In order to get to the opera event, go back into the hole until you see the skeleton ushers, then turn right. You can skip the opera audience if everybody hogs the right wall. All the trash in the backstage is gonna explode when they're about to die, so making huge pools might lead to deaths because of the AoE damage from the explosions. Also, they will cast columns of light that will give a damage buff to whoever is on it, so take them away from the light and get your damage dealers into it to get the benefit of the buff. Opera consists of one of three random events. One is Romeo and Julian, another one is Red Riding Hood, and the last is Wizard of Oz. Romeo and Julian consists of fighting them one at a time. You can interrupt Julian's eternal affection. Romeo can be disarmed. When both of them appear, you can group them up and cleave them. Remember, they have to die between 10 seconds of each other or they'll revive. Currently, this boss is bought and you will only get loot from the last one you kill. So, if you're looking for a particular item, plan accordingly. Red Riding Hood The main mechanic of this fight is that the wolf is gonna turn somebody into the Red Riding Hood. They're gonna have no armor, so whoever gets turned needs to run away. There's gonna be also an AoE fear, so Tremor Totem works great. The Wizard of Oz consists of many mini bosses that will activate between a few seconds of each other. The fight is really simple and you should just be killing whatever spawns until you get the crown, which is the final boss. To get to Nightbin from the opera, follow the door that just opened, go up until you reach the back entrance. The way to Nightbane is through the door that is below the ramp that goes up. You start the encounter by using the urn on the balcony. For this fight, you should divide your team into three groups. One is the tank, the second is the melee, and the third is the range. The reason for this is a spell called Shard Earth that will appear on the feet of a random player. In order to remove the randomness of it in this fight, we have the casters grouped together and the melee grouped together and the tank on the other position so that when a Shard Earth happens, casters or the melee can switch sides at the same as the tank which will just rotate the boss until he is tanking on the opposite wall. Because of the length of this fight, you can use your cooldowns at the start and they should be available by the end. Nightbane casts an AoE melee fear, so if you have a shaman, put a tremor totem on the group. The boss consists of getting it to 75%, 50% and 25%. At all these ranges, Nightbane will start flying, some skeletons will come, AoE them, be careful because spells like Starfall or Magma Totems cool the aggro enemies below the floor, thus making the fight more difficult. If somebody is receiving damage and you don't know where it's coming, have them move around so that the enemies appear over the ground. Of course, these ads are not working as intended and should get fixed at some point. To get to Curator, go up the ramp from the back entrance. Notable trash is only the Arcane Watchman, the big robot that will give somebody an Arcane Explosion debuff so whoever gets it needs to move away from the group. You only need to kill one robot in order to pass, you can skip the other one by hogging the wall. Curator is a very simple fight at the moment. The only thing you need to watch for is killing the adds. Mana feeders are immune to magical damage, so have physical damage dealers kill them as a priority. Arcane protectors can reflect damage based on their emote, S for spells, M for melee, and R for ranged weapons. If you're receiving a lot of damage, stop DPS as you're killing yourself. Finally, up the ramp on the circular room, mana warps will have to be stoned at around 10% health so that they don't cast mana breach, which is an AoE that deals a lot of damage. Ilhulv itself is a very simple fight, just focus fire on him and cleave the other imps 
when anybody gets chained on the green circle in the center of the room, destroy the chains. The shade of our hand was very broken at lunch, so much that people have been exploiting it in order to not deal with any of the mechanics. The staff said that they expect many fixes to be applied on the patch this week. Worth noting is that the teleport from the entrance to our aunt's room didn't work on release, so if you're just killing this boss in order to get a safe point if you wipe, then it's not working. I'll go through the mechanics of this fight, cause most of them are broken, so I'll explain how broken they are and how can you approach them. Flame Wreath is currently out of sync, so when the animation disappears, the spell still lingers for a few seconds. Blizzard will only be cast in one of the quadrants and will not rotate, so it's much easier to avoid. Arcane Explosion is not synced with the pool, so it's much easier to deal with. Also, it's broken here, so you can interrupt the Arcane Explosion and not have to deal with it. Mass Polymorph is casted regardless of if Aran is out of mana or not, so if you get bad RNG and get this multiple times, it could mean a wipe. The main tactic of this boss is to interrupt the fireballs and the frostbolts and let the arcane missiles go. Remember not to move if you get flame read. At 40%, Aran will summon 4 elementals, which can be crowd control by fear, vanish, stuns. They can also be taunted and tanked. They die really quick and deal lots of damage. One way to deal with them is to have your party collapse by the door by breaking line of sight that way you can group them up and AOE them. Another way is to focus them down and kill them as soon as possible. Nether Spite is the only fight in the raid that requires some coordination. The fight itself consists of multiple rounds of the same two phases. Phase 1 is the beams, you start the fight in this phase. Phase 2, the portals disappear and Nether Spite takes shadow form. These two phases will keep repeating until the boss is dead. Phase 1, red beams, you need two tanks, one for each round. The boss will focus on whoever is taking the red beam. The red beam is gonna give the player a stacking buff. So have the tank grab 5 stacks of the buff, then move away and let the boss grab 3 stacks and then grab it back for 5 stacks and so on until the phase is over. The second tank will be doing exactly the same at the second round of the fight when all the phases repeat again. Another way to handle the red beams with only one tank is to have one tank on round 1 and 2 DPS on round 2. Grab two sturdy damage dealers like paladins or warriors. Grab a shield if possible when taking the red beam and have them go in and out as if they were a regular tank. But when they get around 20 stacks, they're gonna let go and have the second DPS take over. The green beam reduces your mana total. So have two classes that do not use mana, grab it for one entire phase. Melee doing the green beam need to be careful not to get too close to the boss cause Nether Spite's hitbox is huge and if you go too close the beam will go to the boss instead of you. Finally for the blue beam assign 4 damage dealers, you're gonna need 2 for each portal phase. Have each damage dealer take around 25 to 30 stacks, at that point they will be receiving too much damage and the next damage dealer needs to take over. Another way to do this is have each damage dealer alternate between each other without letting the buff go down. In all phases, you will need to deal with the mechanic that kills the most players. It's called the Void Zone and it looks like a black circle on the ground. Players need to move out of them as soon as possible as they deal massive amounts of damage. The chest event is pretty self-explanatory, it's the equivalent of a chess game. The faction with most people should interact with Mediv. You can start the event by taking control of the king piece. Kill the opposite leader of the faction that started the event. The other faction can help by using pieces equivalent to the queen, king or the bishops. Move the king where it can be easily damaged and take control of the bishops so they don't heal the king. Prince Malkesar. This fight is quite blocked and makes the boss pretty easy to kill. Its main mechanics are not working correctly. 
and Fibo only sings with Shadow Nova the first time, then it desynchronizes, eliminating the danger of dying by Shadow Nova. It doesn't matter though, because on release, Shadow Nova is interruptible, so as long as you can do that, Prince is nothing but a punching bag. This fight will change a lot for Melee once it's fixed. Main strategy for Prince is to dispel any Shadow War pain that it's under a raid, then Infernals will start dropping every 45 seconds or so. They cast Hellfire type spell, so you need to move away from their AoE. They are static, so move away when they are in range of the group. Have range classes stacked together so that they can move and reposition in case of an Infernal. At 60%, Phase 2 starts. Burn all cooldowns here as this is the most dangerous phase. At 30%, he'll stop casting and feeble, and at that point, just hope for good loot. That's it, I hope it helps. Remember to check out in the description for updated mechanics of the fights once they are patched. Good luck with the drops and have fun.